So let's take a look at another game. This is Heavy Rain, and I would like for anybody at all to chime in at any point in time and say something that they notice. Try to analyze the game for yourself. Sort of let us all know what you're thinking when you're playing. What kind of design choices do you think the designers are making? What are they trying to get across to you? Using passive, active audio, and sort of the graphical styling of the game. So already their loading screen is sort of focused on Ethan Mars, his face, sort of trying to just show you how good the game looks and how real it is. Hey, it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Porcelain lizards? They look new. Out of place with the rest of this old beat up stuff. There's someone there. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Absence of music. Absence of music, that's a good note. Very good note. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? Oh, this is... He has you an iPad. You five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. If you succeed, you will get your reward. Find a sharp object, something that'll make a clean cut. Don't do it. I don't want to have to start hacking away at it. So, how about the fact that his active no voice of him looking for a sharp knife totally contradicts the player and how they don't want to cut off his hand? Yeah, that's a good example. It's going to be intense. So, he, Gotta his find some way to reduce it. The player is hearing what he's thinking, and at the same time, it's sort of Something that might clash with what the players think of themselves. The things that are shaped, the choices, I guess, are really shaky. Yeah. The choices I can't cut off my own finger. I just can't do it. I want to say, Sean, I'd do anything. Anything but that. Don't walk back in. You have four minutes and 30 seconds. Left. That's a long first skip. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, oh, okay. Gotta it. So note that? how like the UI here is constantly present, reminding you of what the controls are. That's something that has to be done in a particular game like this when you want more ambiguity in terms of how you can interact with the environment. When you want to do more things with the environment, you gotta make sacrifices in what your UI is gonna be. You have to let people know that they can use what's in the environment. Uh, this? No, I'm just I have to go through with it. I have no choice, for Sean's sake. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. So, the music has been going for a while now. What kind of effect do you think it's having on you so far? You have four minutes left. Getting a bit more heavy. Building the tension. Although all this is the player's choice, right? Yeah, all this is the player's choice. You could just set the controller down. You could just set the controller down. Yeah. yeah. But then you, you could at any point lose, time. right? You would lose his oh. son. Does, does it let you put money? But there's less of a chance to look at Oh, do it. Try it. So note, even in this game, you design try it. Control. 
and it's designed to risk control, you have to fight every inch of Ethan Mars being to actually go through with this. So it's not only connecting how much he doesn't want to do it, but also with how the player wants to do it. <laughs> and it cuts right there at the tensions. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys sort of saw in that instance how the audio played into building up in the tension. It supplemented a lot of what was happening on the screen. It didn't have to necessarily coordinate with a lot of the visual actions to make you feel very on edge. Just the, the rhythm and the tempo of it alone was enough to get your heart kind of going. But because it was tied with that particular content on screen, it had sort of an amplified effect on how you felt about the character. And even though some of you probably haven't played this game, you felt some sort of connection to him because as the graphics you could see, they were trying to strive for some sort of realism to get a connectivity between you and the game itself to feel like it was more human and had possibly more tendency than most games do. So uh, with that, I'm presenting a game which um, is seen as something of awful, but it's artistically beautiful in just how bad it is. And I think that when you, oh, no. when you examine it, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about in terms of, you can see kind of what the game developer was going for, but you also see them fail to sort of succeed in not only helping the player to play the game, but also in even structuring the game themselves. And so here's an example of how you can take a lesson from a game and how you can learn from a game that's bad. Time for you to disappear! <laughs> Iblis trigger!